Have you ever played tennis? Maybe ping pong? Maybe you call it table tennis. I don't know the difference, but well, maybe you're actually into that current trend of pickleball. You see, all these variations of a similar game, they have this dynamic of a ball going back and forth over a net. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, in the book of Job, there's a lot of tennis, ping pong, pickleball going on. You may say, what do you mean? See, there, there's a lot of back and forth between Job's friends offering their counsel and Job responding. And in chapter 13 and 14, we're witnessing Job respond to his friend who's rebuking Job to confess whatever he's done wrong because obviously he must have done something to deserve all the suffering, pain, and loss he's experiencing. Well, in chapter 13 and 14, Job's response is directed towards his friend and to God. To his friend, he says, stop putting words in God's mouth and let him speak for himself. You see, some of the ideas his friends were sharing about God were true, but they didn't apply to Job's situation. Maybe you've heard this phrase before that there's something wrong in the right. Well, these friends were sharing true statements about God, but the context, the application, it was all wrong which made Job respond in verses four and five of chapter 13 by saying, as physicians, you're worthless quacks. If only you would be silent, that's the wisest thing you could do. You see, the truth was that Job hadn't done anything to anger God's hand or push God to judgment. God was simply allowing Job to go through a test, an intense season of testing. So Job to his friends, he says, stop talking on behalf of God. And his response to God? Well, he asks God for mercy, why he's going through all that he is. And Job begins to reflect on how from his perspective, life's full of trouble. Death seems to be eternal and he wishes that there was a way to live after he dies. Now, ultimately God responds in chapter 38 to these questions that seem to linger throughout most of this book. But let me say this, don't ever let anyone quote from Job 14 to you on what the Bible prescribes for the afterlife. You see, chapter 14 is only descriptive of Job outpouring his heart, not prescriptive of what the Bible teaches on life after death. You know, up until the time of Jesus, there were no full answers to Job's questions. But Jesus, he answered these questions of Job. You see, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. If a man dies, does he go on living, Job would say. And Jesus says, absolutely yes. If he lives and believes in me, he will never die. You see, Job is in the midst of this game of ping pong, going back and forth with the counsel of his friends and the conflict in his heart over his pain and suffering. We can empathize with Job, the trouble, the trial he's experiencing, but he doesn't have the advantage of the vantage point of life held in context of who Jesus is, but we do. Today, let's frame our world with the suffering, pain, and loss that's all around us with these words of Jesus. I am the resurrection and life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying.